Greetings. We are along the Bagby Trail in the Bull of the Woods Wilderness. It's really pretty. Thanks to this little seasonal lake here underneath Battle Axe Mountain. As we're walking along through all this patches of snow and the trail flooded out, you know, what happens to us is we get wet and cold feet, but that doesn't bother us so much. We wanted to talk to you for a minute answer a question we were asked recently how in the world do you get into the back country in sandals well there's kind of a longer answer than we gave which was basically we have tough feet um, but the longer answer here is uh, not only are we very very sure-footed but we've trained our feet for this in a number of ways from intentionally exposing them to cold whoa a little slippery Oh, it's pretty. To intentionally walking over rough and sharp and uncomfortable surfaces. And uh, when you intentionally expose your feet to the cold for long periods of time, you know, months to years. Here's our little stick drag. What happens is the energy producing parts of your cells called the mitochondria start to uh, sort of um, adapt to that cold. And so they ramp up their heat production. And those are the little parts of your cell where that help, they help generate body heat. There's metabolism going on there. And the hotter your feet burn, the less footwear you need. And eventually you get to a point where you don't need any because your feet are just so warm. Even in sandals like these, these are just simple, you know, $17 sandals that we got like six years ago. We've been slowly patching them up. But when you get your feet trained that well, you could literally walk through this kind of stuff barefoot and you know we're kind of tired of the snow getting underneath our feet and then sticking it in the sandals so we're just gonna go for it ah that's better and there you go and i know what you're saying oh what are you showing off like no not really we can do this it's not really that bad yeah it's cold but it's just a sensation especially when it's a nice sunny june day it's hot in the sun so that's not that bad really you know and a lot of people will say oh you know just risking frostbite and hypothermia well here we are out of the snow and there's no more snow on our feet they're already warming up again back into some snow um, we've been in places where there was a lot of snow and we had to turn around because it was just constantly freezing our feet and after you know 20 minutes or so of that ice exposure you might you know risk a little damage you don't want cellular damage on your feet oh this is pretty from this lake oh beautiful little lake here and so we're, we're just, you know, more comfortable in sandals. It's, uh, it's kind of the easier way to go. You pay attention to where you're going more. You're more in tune with uh, the landscape. You can feel whether the ground is dry or whether it's wet, cold or hot. And you're really in tune with what's going on so much more. Because so much, so much so often when you're hiking, you get into this sort of doldrums where you're not paying attention. You're off in your head and... You know, you're not paying attention to what's going on down here, which leads to things like trips and slips and falls. You don't want to be doing that. And the other thing is, uh, when you don't need shoes or socks anymore, you don't have to buy them anymore. And so it's very, very cheap. And we did a little talk recently on Fort Rock to look at our homemade sandals. And that's about as cheap as you can get. They cost us about a dollar and a few minutes of time which was a fun project in general. Oh, these patches, I love, love how it comes underneath. This whole trail is very wet still, early June, here on the Bagby, the bowl of the woods wilderness. Very, very pretty. But you too can train your feet to burn hotter and to be more in tune with nature and what's going on. But one thing we are sort of used to is sucking up the pain. It's true. When you're walking around on, in the forest like this, there's sticks, there's pine needles, there's the sharp parts of pine cones stabbing into you constantly. And sometimes every step is a little bit of pain, a little bit of pain. And you know, <laughs> there's no damage happening, so you don't have to worry about that. And the other really cool thing about going barefoot or in minimal shoes is you tend to be walking on some of the plants a little more often than just going on the bottoms of your shoes. And so you're breaking up a little bit of those plant oils, and if there's any beneficial aspect to them, you'll be getting that into your feet. And that can help stop infection, reduce inflammation, 
all that sorts of thing. So if you're into medicinal plants and you go, oh, well, I want to rub them on my feet for health, well, just go barefoot and you can be walking right through them. This is kind of interesting. Lots of downed trees and logs on this trail. So all in all, we just kind of wanted to do it right in the mud. Ha <laughs> ha, awesome. God, you really get in tune with, with what's going on. Nothing like having mud between your toes. Oh, it's so gross. No, it's not. It's really awesome. You know, people pay money to go get mud applied. And yet, here, you can just walk out here for free. Not only get a good bit of exercise, continue to keep your feet nice and tough and ready for anything, but you can also improve your health and save a buck. And uh, one of the reasons we prefer to go barefoot, even in, like here, and this is some gnarly territory, how many people would want to go barefoot here? You may have heard of some famous cases of hikers losing one of their expensive boots and they can't hike anymore because they have very tender, citified feet that haven't seen sun in weeks or months, haven't seen cold or snow or anything like that ever. And if you come out and do this, you have the toughest feet on your block, be able to go barefoot anywhere, anytime. And it also means that you can go in sandals anywhere, anytime, pretty much. And, you know, these sandals here took us up on Mount Thielsen. Most of the videos that uh, you've uh, been with us for were, we were wearing these sandals. So if you pay attention to what you're doing, don't take any unnecessary risks. Keep your feet nice and tough. You shouldn't have any problems and you can proceed right through long periods of snow hiking just like us completely barefoot pretty awesome well i think we better hang up the camera here and get on with hiking i want to definitely thank you so much for taking a good few minutes to listen to some of the reasons why and how we go into the backcountry in sandals and barefoot